Dragged Across Concrete is directed by S. Craig Zoller, the maker of Brawl and Cell Block 99 and Bone Tomahawk, and stars Mel Gibson and Vince Vaughn, and is the story of two cops who are suspended from the force when they're caught on video being too aggressive. Both of them are in positions where they really need money, and so they decide to delve into the criminal underworld and see if they can solve some things without following the books, so to speak. I've liked both of Zoller's previous films. Bone Tomahawk was brutal and just really fucked up, and Brawl and Cell Block 99 I liked even more, largely because of a very subdued and powerful performance from Vince Vaughn. Really enjoy what he's doing with films. He somehow is able to make movies that feel nostalgic and fresh at the same time. There's something new about the way his films feel, but they also evoke an old-fashioned grindhouse feel. And this film is no different. It's very long. It's two hours and 39 minutes. There are plenty of sequences where not much happens and characters sit around one scene where Vince Vaughn just eats a sandwich and Mel Gibson sits there annoyed with him. There are scenes like that that, that most people would cut out of their movie. Zoller doesn't want to. In fact, from what I understand, Lionsgate was actually hoping that he would trim down some of this film, and he said, you know what? Don't want to. He's very, very particular about getting final cut. He wants his films to be seen in the exact way that he envisions them, which I understand. That's something that I think most creative people can relate to, the idea of wanting your vision heard and seen in the way that you felt it should be. This film looks amazing. The shots feel so meticulously planned particularly the violence. Whenever something fucked up happens, it's almost like it's gone in a flash, like, you, like it didn't even happen. It doesn't feel theatrical. It feels cinematic because it looks so great, but it doesn't feel like you had time to linger on something horrible. It just happens really quick, and oh my god, like it, it just sort of bursts out at you whenever something crazy happens in this movie. Zoller is really good when it comes to cinematic violence. And he's also good at not shying away from the harsh realities of life. No matter how often we'd like to pretend like certain things don't happen, and that we all live in this bubble that's perfectly protected, Zoller doesn't seem very interested in that bubble, and he wants to explore the outside of that and find grotesque things that are going on in the world, whether or not through physical violence or just through things people say when they're behind closed doors, and put that in the light and say, actually, this is a little more realistic than what you're used to. And in some ways, this movie can be off-putting. There are aspects of the movie that have offended a lot of people. I've looked up a lot of reviews since seeing this film. I saw it actually a few months ago, and I wasn't even going to review it, and I just kept thinking about the movie a lot. And I realized it was actually really damn good. And not for any of the reasons that I really expected it to be when I first watched it. I was expecting sort of an old-fashioned grindhouse, really violent movie with Gibson and, and Vince Vaughn shooting up some bad guys, and I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't expect it to be as ponderous as it is about the state of society. And it surprisingly had a lot to say. Some of it I don't agree with personally. But that's the difference between, I think, the way I look at movies and, and the way some others do, is that I don't go to a movie hoping that the characters echo my personal thoughts. I also don't go to a film expecting the characters to be these perfect moral guidelines for how we should all be as human beings. I don't have to look at this film and, and think, oh, I agree with everything these people are saying, because there's plenty of stuff that these characters say that I would never say, and that I don't agree with. But that's why they're interesting to watch, because they're flawed. They're flawed fictional characters that are fascinating in that way. We've gotten to a point with media, the way we consume it, and certainly the way we critique it, it's like we want our movies to be this echo chamber where everyone just feels and thinks the same thing. You make a good moral decision and you're rewarded for it. You're a good person. You're not going to die a horrible death. That's just never going to happen. And we're only going to focus on specific types of violence and make sure that that is the only thing we ever discuss in art, which I think is very damaging to artists. I don't think that an artist should have those types of restrictions. And what Zoller is doing with all of his movies, but especially this one, is he's opening up these dark corners of the world and peering into them and sharing that. And he's a little bit of a tough nut to crack because I can't always tell if he's glorifying it, condoning it, or if he's literally just observing it. 
Because obviously he's creating these movies, he's writing them and directing them, and he wants his vision a certain way. It's just fascinating that a movie has flawed characters, and that Gibson and Vaughn portray them so well. Gibson is pitch perfect in this movie, one of his best performances in years. He's been consistently good in every film I've seen him in for, well, ever. And Vaughn is really, really great too. Different from, from Brawl and Cell Block 99, very different, not the same character at all. But possibly the best performance in the film is by Tori Kittles. His character was interesting as well because of his flaws. There were choices made with him that I just didn't get. And it wasn't because I, I thought it was a poor writing choice. It was because I'm not used to movies being told this way. We're watching people make complicated choices throughout this narrative that don't always make sense in the moment, but they always make for an interesting choice from a character perspective. I would say my biggest issue with this film is its mammoth gargantuan runtime. Yes, Zoller is an artist, and yes, he wants his vision to be seen, and Lionsgate suggested cutting some time off of it. And in this case, I think I actually agree with them. I think a good 15 minutes could have been taken out of this movie and wouldn't really have affected the narrative. I think Zoller could stand to listen to some of that constructive criticism with his next film, because there are aspects of this movie that always felt in the moment, and I was never actually bored. It's really just in retrospect, once the film ends and you understand where it's going, with a really fucking cool ending, by the way, that you look back and you can pinpoint things that just don't really belong and don't add or detract. And so it feels like wasted baggage. But Zoller is a filmmaker that is challenging. He's challenging critics, he's challenging audiences. And that, to me, is far more interesting than a filmmaker who's gonna play it safe. I'm gonna give Dragged Across Concrete a B plus. The runtime is tough, and there's aspects of the film that are going to offend people to the point where they won't be comfortable watching the movie. But if you want to watch a film that does have flawed characters that you don't necessarily have to agree with, but nevertheless be fascinated watching, then I think Dragged Across Concrete might entertain you. I also want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, and that is ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN helps you protect your credit card information from hackers while you're doing online shopping. Without a VPN, your credit card information is wide open to hackers when you're online shopping. If a hacker discovers your information online, they can spend your money and access your shopping accounts, all because you didn't have ExpressVPN protection. ExpressVPN encrypts your internet data, preventing others from sniffing your information over the network. You can shop online with peace of mind thanks to ExpressVPN. It's very very easy to use, you can connect with just one click. ExpressVPN has the fastest speeds, consistently faster than other services, and they have servers in over 94 countries. They have apps for every device, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, router, and tons more. And ExpressVPN is less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And something that I like about ExpressVPN is that it allows you to watch shows or movies that are legally streaming on other services in other countries, but maybe they're not available for you yet. So take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months for free at expressvpn.com slash chris stuckman that link is in the description box below definitely check that out expressvpn.com slash chris stuckman thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching as always look forward to more reviews very soon and if you like this you can click right here and get stuckmanized